What's up? This is T Briz from Trust Beats. Today we are going to do a beginner basics tutorial for SliceX. We're gonna chop and flip a audio sample in SliceX and make a new melody out of it. There's a really great tutorial that shows a full detailed explanation of every single function inside of SliceX. I'll link that one down in the description, but I watched that and I found when I first started chopping and flipping samples, I only needed to know the basics to get what I needed done. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. Those basics include the eight following topics. One, the default functionality when loading a new audio file. Two, what auto dump is. Three, auto slicing options. Four, playing with the keyboard or drum pad, uh, NPC for example. Five, setting up markers and regions for our slices. Six, basic basic pitch change, seven, piano roll editing, and eight, de-clicking. There's a table of contents down in the YouTube description for easy navigation if you need it. And here's a quick example of the before and after of the audio sample that we're going to flip. So the sample was flipped to use for a uh, example boom bap beat in this video. If boom bap isn't your thing, you should stick around anyway to learn the basics of SliceX because that's what this video is really about and you can apply that to any genre of music that you're working with. Here's the example. Uh, this is what the loop sounds like before we chopped it. And here's how it sounds after running it through some slice X. Alright, about to get into the tutorial, I just want to ask if you please take a moment to like and subscribe at some point, I would greatly appreciate that, and here we go. Okay, I got SliceX open here. I want to take a quick moment just to note that SliceX is available in FL Studio producer version and above. We're going to load an audio file. This floppy disk icon, we click that, we do load sample. I've already put the audio file that I want to work with in a folder so I know where it is. Navigate to that folder. I'm just going to use a semantics loop that I found in one of their loop packs for this tutorial. Now there's two things I want to note right off the bat. One, as you can see down here where the audio waveform is, there's a bunch of markers that have already been put on there for us. Those markers are where our slices are currently. It has auto sliced it for us based on the transients of the audio file. It made an educated guess on where we would want some slices to be. Let's go through some of the slices that are on here. If I start to click these buttons down here that uh, sort of represent the keyboard keys. You can start to get an idea of what SliceX has done for us already. That's the first thing I wanted to point out, that it auto sliced it for us, but it also did something else. When we loaded this, this auto dump button was checked off up here. What that does is, if I close out of this and we go to the channel that we have SliceX assigned to, we can see that in the piano roll, a bunch of notes have been drawn in for us already. This is the full waveform and each one of these piano roll notes represents the slice that it sliced for us. So if I play this right now, it will play the entire audio file that we just loaded. If I were to start clicking some of these piano roll notes that are in here, I'll be able to play that portion of the slice. So if I click this big one right here. And if you wanted to, it could be that easy. If you really wanted to really start simple with SliceX, you could just load in that sample, let it slice it up for you automatically and just start arranging a melody from it right in here. For example, if I hit control A and I delete these, Let's say using the default slices they gave us already, I wanted to start just making a beat using that. I could do something as simple as this and throw some drums behind it and I have a chopped up melody. Like imagine some drums behind that. We got something. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we can end the video right here if we wanted to. <laughs> We have some more basic functionality I'd like to review. So I'm just going to delete everything we just put in here. 
Uh, we're gonna close that and pop back into slice X and turn off auto dump. Now the thing about auto dump is, say I, I actually drew this in and I liked it, but then for some reason I came in here and I wanted to shift this marker right here by dragging it over and shorten a note. You see what happened to the piano roll just above that? It just deleted everything that I had written in there. You can see it auto dumped all those notes and overwrote what we were working on. So I like to turn that off. But I find it's more of a nuisance than anything. Okay, so we reviewed loading a file, the default slicing, what auto dump does. We've played some of the slices. Uh, we messed around with the piano roll a bit. Let's talk more about the slicing options that we can play with here. This is the medium auto slicing slash auto slicing button. So if I were to click this, it brings our slices back. Like if I move this, it'll bring me back to the default when we load it up. So I move that marker over and now look at that marker when I click the button, it moves it back to our defaults, right? There are other options inside of this button. If you right click, you can see we have dull auto slicing. Let's click dull auto slicing. Okay, <laughs> dull auto slicing decided that one marker that plays the entire audio file is what a dull auto slice is for this audio wave file. So. <laughs> it might be worth a try if you're just looking to mess around with some different slicing and preset slicing options to save you some time. In this case, I don't think we'll be using this one. Uh, medium auto slicing is the one that we we started up with that kind of looked pretty good for us as a starting point. Sharp auto slicing, it really gets in there. It, you can see, look at the slices it left on here, like this. It's so short, it's almost unusable. That's really short. I'm showing this functionality because it is very basic, but out of those three, most commonly I use the medium auto slicing as my starting point. And then I'll move some of these around and delete some and add some, which is what is coming up. We're gonna do that next. Um, but for now, let's go through the rest of the slicing options that they have. They have small grid slicing. I know that some of these slicing options look useless to us now for what we're doing today because we're working with melodies. But SliceX is very commonly used with drums. So if you have a sample that is a drum loop and you wanted to isolate the elements of the drum loop, the kick, the snare, the hi-hats, some of these options are extremely helpful when it comes to that. Especially this small grid slicing. Say you had 16th notes of hi-hats and you wanted to chop all of those out into individual slices. This might be helpful for that. Or that dull slicing might be way more helpful if you had a bunch of loud kicks in the mix of a drum sample that you were trying to chop the drum sounds out of. So because we're working with melodies, we can see that some of these aren't as useful for us today. But they do have their applications depending on the type of audio file that you're working with. But again... These are pretty tight as well, so I wouldn't use this one on this project, but at least you know it's there. Uh, medium grid slicing. And you can see how it sliced it up and, and uh, sliced it up in the medium grid. It does what it says. Let's say, what do you think large grid slicing is going to do at this point? Exactly. It gave us six slices of a grid. So now you can see what the different type of slicings do in here. Having some auto slicing helps give you a head start when you're trying to chop up a sample that you have. Uh, today, I believe we're going to work with medium auto slicing. Okay, so if you can see in my video here, I got a keyboard set up next to me. I use a keyboard to play around with these sounds that are sliced up for me. Um, you, can, you can play with them here, you can play with them in the piano roll, so you can just point and click with the interface like this. But if you're somebody that has a MIDI keyboard or a uh, digital MPC type drum pad, drum machine type thing that hooks up as an interface, you can use that as well, which is fantastic for somebody who likes to play with their hands. So as you can see, as I click over here on my keyboard, So that's a good way to get into a groove if you're somebody who likes to play with your hands. I'm going to move into the next part. We're going to alter some of the default markers that SliceX put in here for us. A great exercise for this is to go through the entire waveform from beginning to end and play each note and adjust the markers as you go. So each one of these notes you're hitting plays something that satisfies your ear. So for example, here's this first note that we're hitting. For me, it ends a little bit too early. So I'm gonna take this marker next to it. And you can see the section that's that's playing, right? It highlights as I click it. 
So I'm going to delete this marker because I want that note to be a little bit longer, I think. Whoops, it actually deleted the marker I didn't want. Slice X will do that sometimes. So I just double clicked out here to put the playhead in a different location. And then I'll click this one and right click it. Delete. Okay, just to make sure I have the right one. Let's try that first marker section again now. I like that. What about the next one? Again, that one ends a little bit too early and I can tell by this waveform, what's the next note after that? It's probably just like a dead sound. You might like that. You might want to work with the sound like that. Um, but just for the, the uh, sake of this tutorial, I'm going to delete this marker. So now we're deleting markers. Now we got this sound on this. And you can see as you're going through this process from big sweeping across from beginning to end and just listening to each sound and deleting and adding markers, you're creating little one shot instrument type slices within the sample. So you can rearrange these after the fact. You'll see later when we make the beat, we're gonna rearrange these and come up with something totally new. Basically chop and flip this thing by using Slice X. And this is part of that process. I'm gonna go through these notes. Maybe I'll go through a couple more right now on the video. Um, and then I'll just fast forward through, through the final end of it. That's cool. Now this one's gonna be a long one. You can see by the marker section over here, when I click this, it's gonna play maybe for a couple seconds. You could split that into two notes. Um, I like that as one note. That's cool, let's leave it. That could be okay, let's see what comes after it. I think I'm gonna split that one up. Let's delete this. So that one is. I like that, but I want it to end a little earlier. So now I'm gonna take this marker. I can hear that I want it to end right about here, I think. Yep, that's where I wanted it. And now if I click the one after that, you know, I might just leave that one there because I don't know that I'll use it for anything, but the one before it, I want it to end right there. And this one to me is just kind of a dead note. Let's just leave it. Just looking at the transients sometimes, I can tell that I probably want this note here. So you get the idea what I'm doing right now. I'm sort of, I'm deleting, I'm moving, I'm adding markers where I want more markers. Actually, I'm not sure that I added a marker yet. Let me just add a marker just to show you how to do that. So the way I'm doing this right now is I double click here, I get my red line and I come over to this button and it says add, remove marker or region. And when I hit that, you see, it just added a marker right where our red line was. So we've added that marker. I actually don't want that there, but I just realized we didn't show that in the video yet, how to add markers. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click and delete that marker. And you know what, really quick, maybe somebody can help me out with this. If I double click here and I get my red line and I hit M, it should be a shortcut to add a marker. And I do new marker. For some reason, when I hit enter, it does not put a new marker where my red line is. It put it all the way at the beginning of the uh, the slice X. See, this is this is where I say sometimes slice X baffles me when I think it should do something, and I behave a certain way, and it does something like that. So maybe somebody could leave in the comments section and help me out, or I could go Google it myself. But uh, I guess I'm not doing that today, am I? Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, clicking M is a shortcut is broken, so I don't do it. But maybe you guys know something I don't. Help me out with that in the comments section. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so we reviewed adding, deleting, and moving the markers around. Let's move on to the next basic functionality, which is the overall pitch. So there's a couple knobs up here. There's a master level slider. There's a random level slider. There's a master LFO level. I barely touch these. The one I do play with, however, is this pitch slider. I like this pitch slider. Sonically, you can wind up taking a sample that maybe you don't like and then you can pitch it down and it all of a sudden it just sounds darker. Maybe you're going for a darker sound so you pitch it down and all of a sudden the sample sounds darker and you're like, yo, that's it, I found it. Um, I'll show you a quick example. So I'm gonna use marker three as an example. Here's what it sounds like now. And then if I pitch it all the way down. Now that sounds evil. Let's move, start moving it up a bit, like maybe right here. I'm gonna put it back to normal for now. I wanna note that when you change the pitch, if you didn't already notice, it also changes the tempo. So this might be like a second long. And then when you pull the pitch all the way down, it's a few seconds longer. 
There is a way to change that in SliceX where you can pitch it down and maintain the tempo. It's not very user friendly. You actually have to go and do a little bit of math and type in some values to get that to even out. I'm not even gonna review it in this video because to me that's not beginner functionality and we're sticking to beginner functionality. I don't mind that the tempo slows down. Sometimes it's just a cool added effect. All right, I had on my tutorial list next to show how to draw these slice notes into the piano roll. We kind of already went over that right in the beginning when we opened up SliceX, but I'll just show it again really quick. Let me close out of SliceX right now. Here's our channel where SliceX is. We right click and go to piano roll and we just start drawing in markers. I think that's the exact same beat we did at the beginning of the video, but I just wanted to make sure I covered it again. One last basic functionality I will show, a clicking sound issue, and we want to de-click. So let's see if you can hear it. Especially if you have headphones on, I can hear it in my left ear. There's a pop right at the beginning. If you guys know about de-clicking, you can hear there's a click in there just because of where the slice is on the audio sample. It makes that clicking sound. We don't want that, right? So I'm, I'm including this in basic functionality because I think de-clicking is something that's very important. So let's go ahead. It's very simple to do too. We're going to go back into SliceX. We're going to go into the tools. It's a toolbar button. It's tools. That's the name of the button, tools. And up comes the toolbar. That's what she said. We'll Click it. Over here, we have these options to de-click in all regions, de-click out all regions. In the example that we're doing, I know that the clicking is happening at the beginning of marker 19. So I could do de-click in all regions and it should solve our issue. So let me click de-click in all regions. Okay. And then if we go ahead and play that again, it should be gone. And it's gone. If you had the clicking issue at the end of your region, same thing, you'd go in here and you do de-click out all regions and then it would de-click them for you. So there you go, that's a really quick way to clean up these slices if they have popping and clicking. That's about as far as I'm gonna go for basic functionality. Even just using about half of the stuff that we went over today, you can use SliceX to make some really cool sounding stuff. I hope this was helpful. And if you want to stick around, we're gonna actually make a beat using SliceX. What I'd like to do next is during the review, I started to clean up the slices and SliceX. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of these. There we go. I got my slices set up. I'm good with this. And at this point, I'm going to save my project. We should probably just add a kick, a snare, a hi-hat. So I quickly went ahead and just created a quick boom bap style beat using some drum sounds that I quickly picked out and sounds like this. Sounds good enough for us to start getting into some slice X. Uh, we have our slices all picked out in here. I'm going to just try to use the piano roll now to draw something in. That sounds kind of cool. So I took that sample we chopped up and I created this pattern out of it in the piano roll. And it's kind of similar to the original, except you'll hear the difference between it now. I even went ahead and created a new pattern called intro and I painted these notes in here like this and when we play that it sounds like that now the other part of the track that we worked on sounded a lot like the original loop so I wanted to do something that sounded different from the original loop I didn't want anybody to listen to that other part and think oh it just sounds exactly like the loop slice X doesn't do anything slice X if you use it the right way like with something like this and you start getting creative you can really start chopping it and flipping it and getting something completely different out of it I'm gonna go ahead and add some drums to this and we'll call it a day for this beat <laughs> Thank you. 
There's a couple things we could do here next. If you notice, there's a baseline that plays within the sample that we're using. So if you prefer to write your own baseline, you can EQ out the low end on the sample and try to get the bass out of it. And honestly, there's not much more I'm gonna do with this beat today. I wanna say thanks for watching. Please drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Also, leave some comments if you'd like a specific type of tutorial done or if you just want to say hello. Comments really help the video and I appreciate that. Social media links are down in the description, including a link to the Trust Beats page. That's where we release our music every few days. There's a new beat going up. We make music and we put it out there. This channel, T-Briz, is for tutorials. I hope to hear from you all. Have a great day and thank you again. Peace out.